Hello, I want to welcome everyone once again to one of our series. Today we'll be talking about chest examination and which will involve the four key steps that's inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So today we'll be discussing um, chest examination and I'll be taking you through the steps of how to do a chest examination. So the first thing to do is always to clean your hands and um, read the instructions carefully. So at times they could just say, examine the chest of the patient, do not percuss. So you have to remember that not to percuss in the, in the exam, if that's mentioned. But other than that, we'll be going through step-by-step -step examination in, in chest examination. So after cleaning your hands, the next thing is to greet the patient Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Ido, and um, I've been asked to examine you, if that's fine. Go ahead. Pay my attention to your chest, while I will be feeling your chest and also tapping your chest and listening to your chest, if that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Do you have any pain anywhere in your uh, chest? No. So this is very, very important because this can give you an idea or a clue to where the problem is. For example, if he tells me that he has a problem here, or he has a chest pain here, it's most likely that the pathology will be there will be there so it's very important to always remember to ask this question do you have pain anywhere or specifically do you have any pain in your chest so the next thing is go to to go to the foot of the bed while you have the foot of the bed you have to squat and while you squat you try to see the symmetry of the chest and ask him to take a deep breath in and out for me all right so you try to see the chest movement as well so it looks equal on both sides. And you may even ask him to give you a cough. From me, can you give me a cough? <coughs> okay. So at times I might give you an idea of whether he has like a wet cough um, or a dry cough. Um, but it seems, you know, it's fine in our patient here. Then after that, you're trying to count the respiratory rate. And it's very, very important to remember to count this because a lot of candidates forget to do this. So you might want to distract him a bit by paying attention to your pulse, but why you try to count the respiratory rate? So normally it should be between 12 to 18 cycles a minute. So you might want to count for over 15 seconds and multiply by four. So after that, after you've done this, then it's important to pay attention and go to the, um, to the neck region. Uh, because after your inspection, you've done your inspection, You've also counted the respiratory rate. If there's a sputum mug, you might ask, if you think it's coughing, you might ask for a sputum mug and see what the color of, you know, the, what's the color of the sputum, if there's any blood in the, in the sputum. Then after that, the next thing is to palpate. So for palpate, you have, for palpation, you have to check for tracheal centrality. So how do you do that? You put your, um, your ring finger on the clavicular end at this point, then at the clavicular end or the other one, you put your index finger. So you put this, then you run your finger over the midline of your trachea. So you try to see, feel the trachea is at the center. Then getting to this end, then you try to put your middle finger on both sides to see whether there is you know, more space on one side than the other side. All right, so it seems equal in our patients here. In a few people, the trachea might be slightly deviated to the right. So by the time you feel it, you find out that, okay, you can feel the trachea rings. But by the time you now put your finger on the other side of the trachea, you feel taking the whole of your finger without feeling any rings there. So it's important to remember to check, you know, feel the trachea rings again, then put your finger on both sides, just by the size of the stenocleidomastoid, lateral to the trachea rings and see if you can fill the trachea rings on one side than the other. You may also want to quickly check your cricosternal distance, especially in the case of hyperinflated lungs like COPD. You know, there's your um, thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage somewhere just below it. So ideally you should take like three fingers, which we can see here. When a patient with hyperinflated lungs, you might just take one or two fingers. So there's a reduced cricosternal distance as well. Then, the next thing is to check for the chest expansion and ask him to breathe in and out for you. So it's important to ask him to be in the akimbo position. You can ask him to do this. So it's easier for you to even, you know, examine. It gives you enough room to check for expansion and even when you want to pause as well. 
so the upper part you're asking to take a deep breath in and out for me okay then you bring your make sure when you're trying to check for chest expansion make sure you put the the palm surface of your of your hand on the on the on the flanks you may want to pull the skin a bit with it pull the skin a bit with it make sure your thumbs come across the midline touch you know the thumbs are touching but avoid them touching the chest wall so you do this take a deep breath in and out for me as much as you can all right very good so it should take about two inches that's about five cm when it takes a deep breath in and out again yeah that's fine then the same thing pull a bit pull a bit then make sure the touching doesn't need to touch the chest wall now i'll take him to take a deep breath in and out for me so take a deep breath in and out for me please very good so you had good symmetrical chest expansion the next thing to do is to do a tactile frame toes and that's when he's asking to say night night so the vocal resonance which we'll talk about later on auscultation might be more sensitive than the tactile frame toes so you have to check in all the long zones so check when you ask him to say night night please say night night as soon as you feel my hand touching you that's fine all right can you say night night please 99 and make sure it's in the interpostal space, not over the bone. 99. Okay. 99. 99. Okay. 99. And this must be done bilaterally. 99. Then you go to the, you know, the axial region. 99. Then turn here. 99. And again. 99. 99. Very good. So that's for the anterior chest wall area. So you might want to divide this space into three zones, just on a relatively upper part just above the nipple, just below the nipple and the two axillary areas. So you feel the vibration that you feel. So it might, you know, so the sensitivity, you know, actually there's a reduced, there'll be reduced tactile frameters. So that's the concept. Um, but this can be better picked during your vocal resonance using your stethoscope. Next thing is to percuss. So for percussion, you're telling me you're going to tap the chest, if that's fine, sir. So while tapping the chest, you start directly over the clavicle, then again, you percuss over the areas you've done before as well. So I'm going to tap your chest, that's fine. Again, do you have any pain anywhere? No. Okay, so you tap gently. Then just below the clavicle in the space, make sure your hands is touching. You may want to lift these fingers beside a bit off the chest, then you know, make the movement to be at your wrist. So it seems you not know, equal, it seems resonant, except for the area of hepatic dullness, which was a bit dull, and the area of the cardiac dullness. So if there is absent area of cardiac dullness or an absent area of hepatic dullness, that might suggest an hyperinflated lungs. But the lungs would have pushed down you know, the, the liver and as well in the, the heart region might the heart might have been displaced as well in case of uh, uh, you know displaced a bit in hyperinflated lungs and take up the, some of the cardiac area. So it's important to recognize that in patients with COPD, who might actually have like a barrel sh shaped chest, they might also be breathless, they might be pursing their lips, they might also have reduced reposterior distance. Then by the time you percuss, they, they might have a reduced horizontal chest expansion. And by the time you percuss, you find out that they have hyperresonant lung fields with loss of area of cardiac dullness and loss of what hepatic cardiac dullness and hepatic dullness. The next thing is to auscultate. So for, for auscultation, again, remember to direct your stethoscope forward, that you want to listen to all the lung zones. So the apical part of the lungs, so you want to put your, your, your stethoscope just above the at middle end of clavicle, ask him to take a deep breath in and out for you. Very good. You might want to ask him to do this with his mouth slightly opened, and possibly turn the face to the other side, if possible. Very good. Can you turn your face to the other side and ask? Okay. okay. Can you turn the face to the other side, please? 
let's leave it there. Very good. No. It's very good. Uh, thank you. You're doing well. Again. Come on. So. So that's for bread sounds. That's for bread sounds. So bread sounds ideally should be vesicular bread sounds, where your inspiration is likely, you know, longer than the expiration, and there's no gap in between. For bronchial bread sounds, what you expect is that the bread sounds are a bit harsh, and it almost sounded like you know you putting if you put your stethoscope while you track here and you listen, the kind of bread sound you will hear in, in a normal person is the bronchial bread sound. So that seems like a gap. In between a bit a bit harsh uh, compared to the vascular breath sounds um so that's that the next thing is to check your vocal resonance which is like the auscultatory equivalent of the tactile femtus so anytime i put my stethoscope my stethoscope, stethoscope touches you just say 99 that's fine 99 99 99 which one touches you? 99. 99. 99. 99. Okay. So, breath sounds before vocal resonance. So, uh, you know, so I've checked the breath sounds. I've listened to the breath sounds to see if there's any additional breath sounds or if there's bronchial breath sounds or if there's crackles, that will be crepitations or a pura rub. It can be a bit squeaky. So, it, it's important to check breath sounds then. You know, after that, you check for your vocal resonance so again the vocal resonance will be increased go up if there's consolidation but if there is a fluid effusion it will be reduced and the same thing if there's a you know, lobectomy a part of the lung remove a lobe or there's a pneumonectomy or there's a collapse of the lung the vocal resonance and the tactile fermentus will reduce the corresponding zones of the lung so after that the next thing is to um make sure that you know you inspect the back again just like you might have inspected you know the anterior chest wall as well before you know while you were at the foot of the bed and while you know you were by the side of the patient it's also important to do the same thing at the back you're asking to sit up pay attention to the chest posterior chest wall and see if there's any abnormality okay they can ask him to fold his hands like this and put your you know do like this and the other one on top as well, All right? This to give space so that the scapula can move away. I mean, and you can be able, you'll be able to do good examination here. You don't want to be auscultating over the scapula. You don't want to be tapping over the scapula as well, percussing over the scapula. So if you check, you inspect it. Then you want to check for if there's any problem with chest expansion. So I want to take a deep breath in and out when I say, you should, hold on, please. Okay. So now, please, take a deep breath in and out. That's very good. Now, again, again, okay. So you check for the chest expansion at the back as well. Then after that, you want to, you know, uh, that's that's the the expansion. So after that, you want to check for tactile fermenters. So by asking to say ninety nine. So you, in the upper part, you might want to do this. Can you say ninety nine? Ninety nine. About now. Ninety nine. Then consider, make sure it's not over the scapula. So be a scapula is we don't put your hand over the scapula. So can you do this in 99? 99. So you may want to divide it over like four areas. One, two, three, four. Then after that you want to you want to percuss. So I'm going to tap you now, that's fine. Okay. No problem. Then you change your finger. That's fine, it looks you know, resonant in all the areas. Then again, we're going to auscultate. So I want to take a deep breath in and out for me. Then time it touches you. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Very good. No. Oh, no. No. So you don't need to check the axilla again because you've already checked it while doing that in the, in the while you're at the front. 
Then you can ask him to say 99 again. Just to say for who cares in us? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, or whether it's reduced on, on, on one side. And I always look out for any scars. There could be thoracotomy scars. Thoracotomy scars could be due to lobectomy, could be due to pneumonectomy, it could be due to long volume reduction surgery, or it could be due to a wedge resection. So always make sure you look out for those scars in the posterior chest wall. Then after that, it's important to you know, thank the patient, you know, and clean your hands as well. I appreciate the patient for his time. And by that, we've come to the end of the examination. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.